Welcome to Destination Reading. Click a button to begin your journey on the path of reading. There was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh, B I N G O, B I N G O, B I N G O, and bingo was his name. Oh, there was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh, I N G O, I N G O, I N G O, and bingo was his name. Oh, there was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. Click the Go On arrow to go to the next activity. If you look, you'll see print, words, letters, and numbers all around you. In this kitchen, there's print on lots of familiar objects. Look at this calendar. It has a word that tells us the month, letters that stand for the days of the week, and a number for each day of the month. Do you have a calendar at your house? Now look at this box. The word cereal tells us there's cereal inside. Do you eat cereal in the morning? What do the words on your cereal box say? Other things in this kitchen have letters and numbers printed on them too. Printed words give us information or help us understand what something is. Okay, now it's your turn to find things with print. Click the calendar. Good job. This word says July, so we know the calendar is showing the days in the month of July. Click the milk carton. Oops, not quite. Please try again. That's the cereal box. Find the milk carton. You got it. This word says milk, so we know it's a carton of milk. Click the phone book. That's it. These words say phone book. We use the phone book to find phone numbers of people we want to call on the telephone. Click the newspaper. Correct. This newspaper is called the Daily News. We read the words in the newspaper to learn what's going on in the world around us. Click the cereal box. Right. This word says cereal, so we know there's cereal inside. Click the note. Oops, not quite. Please try again. That's the. This is right. These words say, "I'll be home at 4 p.m." Mom. Mom left this note so we'd know when she was going to be home. You found everything in this kitchen. When you're at home, take a look around your kitchen and see how much print you can find. Click the Go On arrow to go to the next activity. The next time you go to the grocery store, take a look at the food labels. The print on the packages can tell you lots of things. 
like what kind of food is inside, how nutritious the food is, and how much it costs. Sometimes people bring shopping lists to the store to help them remember all the things they need to buy. Find the items in the store that go with the words on the list. Please drag milk, toothpaste, and apples into the shopping cart. Good job. Great. Right. That's the apples. Now find eggs, bread, and soap, and put them in the shopping cart. Good job. Great. Right. That's the soap. To finish the shopping, please find green beans, oranges, and cat food. Good job. Great. Right. That's the cat food. Super shopping. You found everything we need. Click the go on arrow to go to the next activity. Green beans. Signs at the zoo tell you what animal you're looking at. Our zookeeper needs your help to find the right signs for these animals. What animal is this? Drag the sign with the word that names this animal to the open spot. Good job! You found the sign with the word lion. Now find the correct sign for this animal. Cool! The word on that sign says camel. Awesome sign for the alligator. Super gorilla sign. Right. The word on that sign says rhinoceros. Outstanding. You found the sign for the owl. Thanks for helping the zookeeper find the right signs. Now the zoo visitors will know what animals they're seeing. Click the go on arrow to go to the next activity. Owl. Owl. You can find print on lots of things, both inside and outside. Outside, you'll see different kinds of signs that give you information. Look at the signs on this street. Click the sign that tells us we must stop our car. Right. The word on this sign says stop, and it means we must stop our car and look both ways before driving on. Click the sign that tells us where we can recycle our bottles. Cans and newspapers. Correct. The word says recycle, and it means we can put our recycling in this bin. Click the sign that tells us which way to get to the zoo. Good job. The word on this sign says zoo, and the arrow shows us which direction we need to go to get to the zoo. Click the sign that. Tells us we can buy things at the market inside. Oops, not quite. You got it. The word on this sign says market, and it tells us the building is a store where we can buy things inside. Click the sign that tells us where we can park our car. Oops, that's it. The words on this sign say, "Park here, five dollars." We can park our car there if we pay five dollars. Click the sign that tells us where to wait for the bus. That's it. The words on this sign say, "Bus stop," and it tells us the bus will stop here. Click the sign that tells us how far away the homes are. You got it. The words on this sign say "New homes two miles." That tells us if we want to see the new homes, 
We need to drive two miles ahead. You're a good sign spotter. You found all the signs on this street. Click the go on arrow to go to the next activity. Let's read a story. This is the cover of the book we're going to read. You can tell a lot about a story by looking at the cover. The title of the story, It's Time for Bed, is on the cover. The title gives the reader information about what the story might be about. The cover also tells us who wrote the book. This says that a person named Eileen M. Anderson wrote the story. We call the person who writes a story an author. It is the author's job to write the words and make an interesting story for you to read. There is another person's name on the cover of this book. Her name is Wenda Collins. Wenda drew all the pictures you will see in this story. We call this person an illustrator. Pictures are very important because they show things that happen in a story. Now, when we open the cover, we will come to the pages in this book. The first page of this book is called the title page. It has a lot of the same information as the cover. It tells us the title, the author, and illustrator. Let's have fun and read It's Time for Bed. It's time for bed, my parents say. I don't want to sleep. I'd rather play. Pick up your toys. Pick up your books, Mama says with a scolding look. I pick up my toys. I clean the mess. When I'm done, I pull off my dress. I feel so cool. I feel so free. I dance around. I hop with glee. Where? Where are your PJs? Dad wants to know. We search the room, both high and low. Not in the closet. Not in the drawers. Not in the toy box. Not on the floor. I start to giggle. I say, "Look at that! My PJs are under our big orange cat." Time to brush your teeth, says Dad. I pick up my hairbrush. He starts to look mad. I skip to the bathroom and up to the sink. I pick up my toothbrush. It's bright, sparkly pink. I run the water. I brush my teeth. I check for spiders on the floor underneath. I use the toilet and then I wash up. I take a drink from my favorite cup. Look at this picture. The illustrator drew it to show a part of the story. This illustration shows us what the girl's favorite cup looks like. I jump to my bedroom in a few big leaps. I want a story before going to sleep. I choose a book and Mama reads. It's about a princess and her daring deeds. Dad smooths the covers. I'm warm and snug. Then it's two big kisses and two big hugs. I'm not really sleepy, I say, but they're gone, and so I let out one great big yawn. I close my eyes. How cozy it seems as I drift off into my own dreams. Now we are going to read a story called "The Thirsty Frog." Before we read it, let's look at some of the letters, words, and sentences in this story. These are the words on the first page in the story. 
The very first word in the story is right here. It is the word once. The word once has four different letters in it. The letters are O, N, C, and E. When we put letters together, they make words. In a story, writers put words together to make sentences. The word once is in the sentence. Once there was a frog named Tiddlick. There is a space between each word in the sentence. Did you notice each word in the sentence as it was read out loud? Let's begin this story. Look for the letters, words, and sentences as we read the Thirsty Frog. Once there was a frog named Tiddlick. He lived in the Australian desert. One summer morning, Tiddlick woke up early. He was very hot and thirsty, so he began to drink. Tiddlick drank up the creeks and rivers, but he was still thirsty, so he drank up the ponds and lakes. Soon there wasn't a drop of water left in the whole wide world. The other animals woke up. They were hot and thirsty too. Where is all the water? They cried. Then the animals saw Tiddlick. He was big and fat and filled with water. Tiddlick! They shouted. You drank all the water. Let it out so we can have some. But Tiddlick didn't answer. He just pressed his lips together and held the water in. We must make Tiddlick laugh," said Wombat. "Then he will open his mouth and let the water out." So the animals tried to make Tiddlick laugh. Emu tickled Tiddlick with her feathers. Wallaby told silly stories. Look at the words on this page. They are put together to make one sentence. Can you count how many words there are in the sentence? Kangaroo jumped over koala, and Kookaburra sang a loud, wacky song. All the other animals laughed and laughed. But Tiddlick never even smiled. Let me try," said Platypus. "I will pretend to be a funny bird." Platypus stood up on two of her legs. She flapped her arms. She kicked her feet, and she made a funny sound through her big, wide bill. All the noise woke up Eel. He was sleeping in the mud. He raised his head. "What's going on?" he asked sleepily. Platypus didn't see Eel. She danced right over him and tripped on his head. Up, up into the air she flew. Then down in the mud she fell. Ker plop. Tiddlick tried not to laugh, but Platypus was covered with mud. She looked so funny. First, Tiddlick smiled, then he giggled, then he burst out laughing. Ha! When Tiddlick laughed, his mouth opened wide. All of the water spilled out in a flood. The flood filled up the creeks. It filled up the rivers. It filled up the ponds and the lakes, and all of the animals had plenty to drink. Did you know there are real frogs like Tiddlick that live in the deserts of Australia? They are called water-holding frogs. When it rains. 
they drink so much water that their bodies swell up like fat balloons. Then they bury themselves in the mud until it rains again. Water-holding frogs can live underground for months and even years if there is no rain. Here's another story for us to read. This one is The Pig and the Pancake. Let's look at the words on this page. To begin reading, we start at the top of the page. On this page, we'll start reading with the word one. When we read stories, we read from left to right, like this. One morning, a man woke up very hungry. That was the first sentence on this page. It has a lot of words. Each word has a space to separate it from the other words. There is a mark at the end of each sentence to tell us where to stop. Here is the mark at the end of this sentence. It is called a period. The special marks in sentences are called punctuation marks. There are several different kinds of punctuation marks. You already learned about the period, and you'll see it a lot in the stories you read. This is called an exclamation point. You'll see it at the end of an exciting sentence. Now, here is a question mark. We use question marks after sentences that ask a question. Commas are used in sentences, but not at the end. Commas tell the reader to pause or separate different ideas in a sentence. Let's read this story and look for the different punctuation marks you learned about. One morning, a man woke up very hungry. I will make a pancake for breakfast, he said. The man flipped the pancake up in the air, but he tossed it too high. The pancake fell to the floor and rolled out the door. Pancake rolled along until it met Rabbit. Good morning, said Rabbit. Good morning, said Pancake. You look very tasty, said Rabbit. May I eat you? No, said Pancake. Pancake rolled along until it met Fox. Good morning, said Fox. Good morning, said Pancake. You smell very sweet, said Fox. May I eat you? Never, said Pancake. This page has a lot of different punctuation marks. Can you find them? How many can you find? Pancake rolled along until it met Pig. Good morning, said Pig. Good morning, said Pancake. What did you say? asked Pig. Good morning, Pancake said again. I cannot hear you, said Pig. Come closer, please. So Pancake rolled closer and closer and closer until. Jump! Pig took a bite out of that very tasty pancake. Ouch! cried Pancake, and away it rolled. Pancake rolled along, looking for a place to hide. It came to a hole in the ground. Pancake rolled into the hole, and then rolled out the other side. Then Pancake kept right on rolling. That pancake was very tasty, said Pig. I must eat the rest of it. So Pig kept looking for Pancake. Pig sniffed in the dirt with his snout. He dug holes in the dirt with his feet. 
but he could not find pancake anywhere. Even today, pig is sniffing and digging. He is still looking for pancake. The end. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, touch your toes. If you're happy and you know it, touch your toes. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, touch your toes. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! Hooray! She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses. She'll be driving. Six White horses, she'll be driving six white horses when she comes. She'll be shining just like silver when she comes. She'll be shining just like silver when she comes. She'll be shining just like silver. She'll be shining just like silver. She'll be shining just like silver when she comes. Oh, we'll all go out to meet her when she comes. Oh, we'll all go out to meet her when she comes. Oh, we'll all go out to meet her. Oh, we'll all go out to meet her. Oh, we'll all go out to meet her when she comes. We'll have some chicken and dumplings when she comes. We'll have some chicken and dumplings when she comes. We'll have some chicken and dumplings. We'll have some chicken and dumplings. We'll have some chicken and dumplings when she comes. Let's make a sentence. Drag stickers to fill in the sentence blanks and see the pictures turn into words. You can use any sticker you want. Try different ones to find the sentence you like best. These stickers are all pictures of words that start with the letter B. We call them B words. Bear, badger, bobcat. Keep playing with this sentence, or click the yellow arrow to try the next sentence. These stickers are all pictures of M words. Use them to complete the sentence. Mouth, marshmallows, milk. Keep playing with this sentence, or click the yellow arrow to try the next sentence. These stickers are all pictures of S words. Use them to complete the sentence. Starfish, snow, snakes. Keep playing with this sentence, or click the yellow arrow to try the next sentence. These stickers have pictures of P words. Use them to finish this sentence. Peanuts, pineapple, peaches. You have completed the last activity in this unit. Now click the map button.